Hello friends, once again I welcome you to my channel and in my last video we are discussing some numericals on addressing mode. In this video we will be discussing some numericals from gate exam. So the numerical is like this. It was there in gate 2007. The numerical is saying that uh, a set of code segment is given and your R1, R2, R3 these are my general purpose registers and the instruction is given and their operation meaning is given because in this architecture course we are following your generalized concept so what is the meaning of the instruction where is the destination which one is the destination everything is given as part of your operation so that we'll understand it right the question will be understood the next it is given assume that the content of memory location 3000 is 10 and the content of register r3 is 2000 these two data are given and the content of each of the memory locations starting from 2000 to 2010 is 100. That means each of them is having 100, 100. The program is loaded from the memory location 1000. That means the address of the very first instruction is 1000. All the numbers are in decimal. Assume that the memory is word addressable. How many number of memory references for accessing the data in executing the program completely. Here it is actually fill in the blanks. I put the question mark. That means they are asking us that whenever we will execute this complete program that time not for complete execution of the instruction rather only for referring to the data. Maybe for read operation, maybe for write operation, whatever be the operation. But how many times we are referring to the memory for complete execution of the program that we need to find out. See in this program loop is there. See loop is there. That means we will be doing some part repeatedly. How many times everything we need to see then we can solve it. Actually it is a basic. Um, so let's see. We will start. So whatever data are given to us that I have drawn here once again. They have said 2000 to 2010 each of them is holding the value 100. 3000 is containing value 10. Register R3 is containing value 2000. So these are extra data that is given to us. Not extra data. Some uh, data for solving the problem is given. And the instruction is this and their meaning is given. Now see what this instruction is doing. Move R1 comma within bracket 3000. Here they are taking this notation for representing direct addressing mode. Because at address 3000 in memory, we are going to get the data that is loaded into R1, right? Here it is not memory indirect. Their notation says it is memory direct addressing mode, right? So from memory location 3000, we are bringing one data into register R1. So as part of your instruction execution, obviously two memory references. But as part of only data reference, then how many times we have referred to the memory? Only once to get the data from this location. So number of references will be one. Done. Next one, what they are doing? So R1 will be holding what? By the time this one is executed, the value of R1 will be content of memory location 3000. What is that? 10. So we have written 10. Then move R2 comma bracket R3. That means R3 register is holding some address. What is that? 2000. At address 2000, we have the value 100 that is given to R2. So what will be the value of R2 next? R2 value will be 100. We can understand. And how many times we have referred to the memory? Only once. One. Then add R2 comma R1. R2 will be holding the result. And both R1 and R2 are part of CPU registers. So we need not have to go to memory. So memory reference will be 0. And the content of R2 will become what? Addition of these two numbers. What is that? 110. Right? Then next is move uh, square, within bracket R3 comma R2. That means we will send the value of R2 into memory location whose address is in R3. That means R3 is holding what? R3 is holding 2000. So at location 2000 we will be sending the content of R2. Basically what we are doing? We are sending the result of addition into memory location whatever is pointed by R3. So now this will be holding what? 110. Done. 
after that we'll decrement our count so r1 will become what 9 counter has been uh, counter is decremented then what is the next instruction okay in between i forgot to uh, write the memory references this is one then increment r3 increment r3 means now r3 previously r3 was holding 2000 this time r3 will be holding 2001 that means it will be pointing to this location, right? 2001, it is 1, right? R3 is incremented and decrement R1. Decrement R1 means it will be 9. So how many memory references each of them will take? 0, 0. Why? Because they are part of CPU registers, right? Next is B and Z. B and Z is a conditional branch instruction. What it does, it will check the result of the previous instruction. That is the content of R1. And if that result is not equal to 0, B and Z means branch on not equal to 0. What is not equal to 0? The result of previous instruction. That is the content of R1. So whether R1 content is 0? No. What is it? 9. So what you will do? You will jump to the instruction whose level is part of the branch instruction. So where you will go to? You will go to this instruction. Understand? So this again you are going to repeat. You are again going to repeat the same procedure. So now R2 will be having whatever is there in memory location 2001. So what is that? 100. This is 100. Then um, what they are asking us to do? Add R2, comma R1. R1 value is what? 9. So R2 will become what? Previously it was 110. This time it will be 109. Right? Means what we are doing basically? We are adding the content of your, this one. We are adding the content of counter with this memory location in each iteration of the loop. This we are doing. And what we are, we need to find out. Number of memory references for complete program execution. So see, basically this program is actually executing one loop. And that loop is based on what? Register content R1. Yes or no? Because we are checking the result of R1. If R1 is not equal to 0, do the loop. Else come out of the loop. So basically doing loop depends on the content of R1. And see one more thing. Inside the loop, see here. Inside the loop, here nowhere R1 is appearing in the role of destination. See, here nowhere in the loop other than this instruction, other than this instruction, nowhere it is appearing in the role of destination inside the loop i am talking so only decrement is changing the value of r1 but my previous instructions are not changing the value of r1 right so see so r1 is not getting modified by anyone else only by your decrement operation so how many decrement operations we will be doing starting from 10 we will be doing 10 then 9 8 this will keep on doing till 1 once it becomes 0 Right. Once it becomes 0, till 1 we will be doing the loop. Whenever the decrement operation will make the value as 0, that time this condition will become false and you will stop the program. And you will halt. Halt means you will stop the program execution. So basically how many times we have executed the loop? How many times we can execute the loop? That depends on the value of R1. So this loop is executed for the value of r1 as 10 9 8 7 6 this so on till 1 so how many times total it has executed for your 10 number of times the loop is executed so 10 number of times this instructions will be executed one time this instruction will be executed right one time this instruction will be executed before that one more point i would like to clear this instruction will take one memory reference. This is a branch instruction. The value of this level is part of the address field of the instruction. So no need to go to memory for executing this instruction. Only for fetching you have to. So as part of operand fetching or say writing to the memory, we need not have to go to, uh, that need not have to perform any memory operations. So this one, no, nothing is required and halt is simply a mnemonic. So it will be one memory reference. Sorry, as part of operand fetch, it will be 0. As part of operand fetch, it will be also 0. And what I have concluded that this branch instruct, this loop will be executed 10 number of times. So these instructions will be executed 10 number of times. 
so total how many references will be there first outside the loop it is one inside the loop it is one plus one all others are zero sorry it is one and how many total times we have executed loop 10 times so the value will be 21 this part is true 2 into 10 is 20 plus 1 is 21 right so see see here once again memory references are considered only for the opponents this part you need to be careful because in generally we uh, consider memory references for the whole instruction but see here it is given for only for operands so we need to be very very careful while doing the things basically the question is easy but small small points are there that we need to take care so see this is only for operand this is one point second one is you need not have to see 10 iterations after doing one iteration you will get to know that your r1 is not modified by anyone only by decrement operation and my loop depends on the value of r1 so r1 till it becomes zero loop will be executed so it will execute for 10 9 8 and so on till 1 once it reaches 0 program will stop and for each instruction we can easily identify the number of references so simply we need to do a simple arithmetic to find the total references yes so outside the loop we have a, taken memory references one inside the loop only this one and this one so two and number of times loop executed is 10 because r1 content initially was 10 and it was a down loop till 0 till not equal to 0 right then number of memory references is for accessing the data in executing the program completely will be what one that is outside the loop 2 into 10 that is inside the loop total is 21 hope this one is clear this is a very interesting numerical only we need to be careful what are the data are given to us and then simply apply it you will come to an answer right thank you in my next video, I'll be discussing one more numerical from gate exam. Till then, thank you. And if you're liking my videos, please like my videos and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.